Hey, what's up, everyone? We have an awesome episode today. So we have MJ from PG Edge, and we're going to do an awesome demo about PostgreSQL on Bare Metal. So uh, what's up? Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. So excited to be here with, with you and everybody. This is, uh, this is a first for me. I've always wanted to do a YouTube Live. So the fact that I get to do my first with you, uh, an ex Culver City native. Uh, yeah, who's that's a right. Block that's from right. Me. Uh, I'm super excited about it. I'm pumped to be here. I forgot that you and I used to live in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, you know, I I do I do miss it a lot, but now I'm back here in Philadelphia because I have roots here, um, and so that's where I do all of my software writing is here. Um, so yeah, so let me just do a quick screen share of your screen here, and uh, if you wanted to just walk us through just for a quick minute and show us like what you're going to be go, uh, going to be talking about here. And then we can jump into, I think that you have some slides, a cool demo mm -hmm. and uh, a cool, yeah. you know, maybe like some like questions from of your customers and just tell people more about like, uh, about your product and services. And then also I will mention really quick, there's this QR code at the upper left. I'm not sure if it's here or here, maybe it's, it's over here. There's a QR code in the corner. You can click on that and then you can get a free download to PG Edge uh, and then find out more about this awesome product. So I'll stop there and I'll just pass the microphone off to MJ. Perfect. Very good. Yeah. So when I was really thinking about, you know, what I wanted to show here, it's always a, kind of a, a an art when it comes to how, how best to show databases, right? Because in the end, when you're looking at a database, like, let me pull it over here. I've got, you know, my, my database and I've got my data structures here, which is cool. You know, I can go in, I do my inserts and select statements and all that, but like, that's not always the most fun for uh, demo. So what I wanted to do is is still show you some of the core capabilities of PG Edge, but with a couple of different flavors. So I actually show you um, two different demos through the course of the conversation today. And the one that I, I wanted to start with was uh, the Northwind app, which is actually accessible. If you go to northwind.pgedge.com, uh, you can actually uh, go go to the app that I'm showing you here right now, so you can play around with it a little bit. But it kind of gets to the heart of some of the key value that you see with with PG Edge, which is around providing low latency. And one of the cool things here is it kind of shows all of the different users that are like accessing this application right now worldwide. So you can kind of see, you know, we have people kind of all over the world playing around with this app. And then me, who is no longer in Culver City, uh, unfortunately, but I am in this greater San Bernardino area. Um, and you can actually see how I'm interacting with the underlying uh, databases that I have here. So at PG Edge, we have a multi-master solution, which means that you can have a cluster of uh, database node groups that effectively allow you to write to any of those specific ones. And so within this application here, you can see that I actually have three different node groups geographically dispersed throughout the world. I've got um, the one that's closest to me, which is in the Portland area. I also have one here in the east of the United States and another in uh, Europe. Uh, in that Frankfurt area. And you can see the latency for each of them. Unsurprisingly, the one in Portland is very responsive for me. And one of the cool things too about this uh, app uh, that you can see for yourself is actually as I'm going through, as I'm using the actual application itself, you can actually see that the queries against the database are showing up here and the actual time that it took for those queries to happen. So you can kind of get a sense of that, that performance that you're getting by having your data closer to your end user you have um, ultimately a more responsive application or a, a more responsive uh, data set to your specific business needs, which is which is kind of kind of unique and useful, and I think goes really well with Metal because Metal has so much regionality to it that like you can really kind of pinpoint your data really close to your your end users, which I think is a, a really great like synergy between PG Edge and Metal because you can you can kind of like pinpoint them and have even kind of multiple nodes. Uh, dispersed throughout the the world close to those end users um cool yeah um, okay. yeah it, Let, by the way uh, what i what i just wanted to show if i can share my screen for a quick second mm -hmm. let me see if this works share uh just so those who are new to it uh this is your company right so uh just so just tell me really quick maybe just like a quick maybe like a 30 second pitch of like what is pg edge and like why would i want to use it and then like let's jump into the demo if that yeah if that, if, uh, if that works absolutely so pg edge is a, a multi-master database uh built right on top of postgres so it's postgres native at its heart uh and it'll by being multi-master 
it allows you to write to multiple different nodes. Most, uh, say the standard vanilla Postgres uh, doesn't uh, allow for that capability. Um, with PG Edge, you have that. And so what's the benefit kind of organizationally for having that? Um, being able to be low latency, having ultra high availability, being able to be tolerant to circumstances where you have like a node group that goes down or something like that, your your application is still running. Uh, and so that's that's a, like some of the key benefits uh, to it. I think too, some, some of the things that people have come to us for is being able to handle data residency needs, right? Being able to kind of have your data in specific locations, um, leveraging the ability to be able to write to those. So I can have my data in Europe, I can have my data in California um, and be cognizant of uh, certain compliance needs, that type of thing. So those those are some of the, the um, core considerations and, and kind of what makes us unique. We're also open um, and transparent in terms of our um, our actual code itself. So being open source, you can actually take a look at that uh, that code if, if you so desire, which again, is just uh, is our approach uh, to how we've developed our platform. Awesome. So I was showing my screen for the past two minutes and then I realized that I wasn't sharing it. So now I'm showing it <laughs> as you're talking. So I apologize for the past minute. There was probably nothing on the stream, so I apologize. But here's the website. If you want to find out more, of course, click on that QR code. Uh, uh, in the corner, and I'll pass it now back to MJ uh, for the demo. So, uh, yeah, okay, so here, let me just uh, turn my screen off, and then I'll bring it back to you. Yeah. So um, let me let me just set the stage a little bit for okay. uh, jumping into the, the demo. So as I mentioned, we're open source. We're using the latest, greatest versions of a PG Edge. Uh, and we support some of the, the latest uh, the latest and greatest versions of Postgres, excuse me. And we also uh, can work in conjunction to some of the most common extensions like PostGIS is something that I've been hearing a lot lately. Mm -hmm. That means that all of your knowledge and understanding of Postgres is uh, immediately applicable to, to PG Edge. And so um, as you saw with the initial demo, it's kind of showing you some of those low latency capabilities. But uh, I also kind of want to provide a little bit of context on what what ultra high availability means as it pertains to PGX. And so being able to write to any of those specific master nodes throughout the uh, world uh, is definitely powerful, it gives you additional layers of comfort that your application and your data is available should there be any sort of circumstances that arise. But we can also leverage other core technology capabilities like physical replication and re read replicas um, at that node group level to just give those extra nines of uptime and availability because uptime and availability is so critically important for so many of those applications that are out there today. You just wanna ensure that that application is is running um, all the time and you know, downtime's money. Uh, so being able to, to not have that downtime um, and having it something that's responsive to those end users is critically important. Another key piece of, of our architecture is really around um, being flexible with the design of it. So if you want, as an example, to have, you know, uh, you have a lot of um, uh, data needs in a specific region, you can actually make it so you have more servers to handle those particular needs or have higher levels of, of uptime uh, guarantees for those particular um, regions. So it just gives you some additional flexibility. You can kind of mix and match the components to, to kind of meet your specific business needs as you require. Hmm. providing those always on capabilities, you know, downtime maintenance and that optimal experience for that end application. Where I really like this working fundamentally very well with, with Equinix uh, is ultimately you're able to be on metal, right? Uh, which actually, if you look at um, metals regionality, there's so much options here. Like this is actually a really cool, uh, as a comparison, I say some of the other cloud providers like AWS, GCP, Azure, yes, we support them but they don't have this type of like uh, like regionality. So you can have something like, I want something in Dallas, I can, I can have it there. So you, you have a lot of flexibility in, to, in terms of where you can put your data, uh, which works really well with PG Edge because each of those um, locations can be a area that you're writing to. Some of the other database providers out there, vanilla Postgres, ultimately you're, you're going to have to maybe wait until replication is completed before the you know uh, the rights uh, confirmed. Uh, it just provides a less responsive application 
Um, so there's just some some key benefits there. I know one of the customers that um, we've been speaking to, uh, working with um, for a while, uh, they, they have data in Australia, and that's uh, a real pain point for them because data in Australia, if your if your data is residing, uh, your users are accessing the data from Australia. So if your data is residing in the U.S. from there, it's just it's a painful experience. Um, and then with the the network capabilities too of of um, Equinix, one of the great things too, is you can also be cross cloud if you want, or you can even be on prem. So you can kind of like mix and match the capabilities that best meets your uh, business requirements. So it's kind of a fun, fun part of, uh, I think, PGS working pretty fluidly with the, the Equinix stack there. Really quick. And also uh, I wanted to mention about, uh, so you mentioned about how Multimaster can can lower your cost. Uh, there is this mm -hmm. white paper. I threw it in the chat and I'll add it to the video mm -hmm. description below. Uh, so for those who are watching, but this QR code here, uh, because before we had the QR code for the PDF or to, to create the account, um, this QR code in the corner is a white paper. So you can read more about what MJ was, was just talking about, about lowering the cost uh, and about multi-master. So uh, I just wanted to do a shout out about that. And uh, yeah, so continue. Cool. Uh, all right, so let me just jump right into another demo of, of PG Edge here. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a uh, global cluster here um, with a, a kind of reflective of what we hear a lot in the field of having, say, um, users and say like the West or Central of the U.S. as well as in Europe. So I want uh, in this circumstance the ability to be able to connect to my closest uh, database to those end users uh, with the ability to have redundancy across them. So there's a constant synchronization between each of the nodes um, to, ensure, to ensure that they're in sync. But at the same time, let's say that one of my regions goes down, as uh, been known to happen on occasion with, with some of the other cloud providers, not Equinix, um, but uh, ultimately um, that I can then redirect uh, my application to use that that other region and as you can see in a manner that's uh still fairly responsive to the end user so with that said uh, let me jump right into that demo here so we get uh one second as i load up that application so uh, a couple things to note on this let me log in real quick all right so uh, i'm using the northwind data set uh, we use this, uh, and in fact, we have ways to uh, just uh, with a simple CLI command or even in our cloud, you can click a button and install Northwind just because it's a data set that everybody's familiar with. So it's easy to use and you can play around with it. You don't have to worry about um, screwing around with your own data. Uh, this is going to be spread across. So this is a multi-cloud setup. So I have a node um, in the uh, US West as well as in Europe. Um, for um, AWS, and then I'm using Dallas for Equinix. And then this is just another reflection of how you can build and access the, the PG Edge um, data. Ultimately, we have customers using it in so many different uh, setups and configurations. Um, we have a lot of flexibility there, but I just wanted to give you a kind of a quick perspective of what that might look like. Just so as you can see okay. here, I am right, um, right in this area here. I'm collect, uh, connecting to my uh, database up here in Portland. Uh, I've got uh, the node here in Dallas as well as uh, in the east. And in, in this particular circumstance, uh, all of them are up and online. So this is kind of my multi um, my multi cloud uh, setup uh, and gives me some in and vis visibility into that. Now I can pull back data on my end employee if I need to say like make an update to that particular individuals. Um, so Nancy's phone number, I can do that. And then you can see that that data is then synchronized across uh, all of the nodes that I have. But being um, multi-master, I have that ability to go ahead and update from any specific node. And then as you're able to see that that is that data is quickly reflected across all nodes in the um, in my in my cluster specifically but let's say there's a catastrophic circumstance and mm. my 
my uh, AWS uh, region goes down for whatever reason. So let me let me take that down right now. Give me one second. I'm just pulling over here. You can see there I've got my AWS up and I just am stopping. And this is the ultra um, high availability that you're referring to, That's right? right? Okay. Right. And the, and the nice thing here is you also have like flexibility in how you would design it specifically. So um, I'm just kind of showing you one example. You can kind of augment with the three replicas and you can get really fancy in terms of being able to manage your loads across your, um, your node groups. But in this case, I'm just keeping it nice and simple. Just just three servers to, to give you a perspective of of how we could handle it in this in this particular circumstance. So I uh, you'll notice now that 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 node is off, um, but I still have the other nodes available here. I can go ahead and pull up the employees' information from that, and I'm able to still update their information. And what's great about this is while that's, uh, so you can see here, that's still reflected. Once I go ahead and I turn that instance back on, um, I'm actually able to then synchronize the Delta information so that while there was the data that was fundamentally um, changed uh, when I went to the other nodes, even though that one node was down, once it came back up, uh, it's able to effectively synchronize that data. So if I come back here, now my node should be back up and then I can pull in that um, individual's information and you can see here that it's been been synchronized, right? So it's just like that extra layer of assurance that your data is going to be where it needs to be, when it needs to be there, um, when you know catastrophic circumstances arise and then also providing that optimal experience. Because too, another thing that we've seen a lot, especially with um, people's experiences now with with uh, applications is that they really expect those applications to be truly performant um, and responsive. And when data takes a long time to be pulled into that application, you know, you just have drop off and people are leaving. So it's it's got a lot of flexibility there with with PG Edge. And so that's kind of like the the fundamentals of 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 what what we're, where people are commonly wanting to hear a little bit about in terms of PG Edge. Very cool. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, and, and so, is there more to this demo, or or was that that's it? Nice and that was short, the, short and sweet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, now, uh, so you you would be able to to like reproduce this no like no matter where you were uh, in the United States. And would this also work for other parts of the world, or is it pretty much just a like domestic? um example mm -hmm. no you can absolutely uh you have flexibility to deploy pg edge um wherever you want right uh let me let me pull up a side here so what's great here is with metal oops, that might take a second to load here is you've got basically all of these different metal locations can be okay. a pg edge node so that gives you a lot of flexibility or you know some of our customers say i want certain data in certain regions. So as an example, um, let's say I have a set of my data on my own on-premise systems and that needs to be, you know, in Europe because of, you know, GDPR requirements or something like that. You can kind of mix and match those different capabilities. So I could say, I'm gonna use Equinix Metal in Dallas for my US users. And then I'm gonna use an on-premise system and using the, you know, the, the huge pipes that Equinix has for uh, data transfer. And I'm going to use that to connect to my on-premise system in Europe. And so you're getting optimal um, data transfer between your nodes um, and optimal experiences for the end, end users or end users of that data, end users application or end users of that data. Got it. Okay. Um, and so this is with PGA, uh, this, this is all with Postgres with uh, this is all with postgresql 16 right yeah um or or earlier versions like okay. fundamentally if you're let me see if i got a slide here um for the pg edge platform right okay. what we do is we sit right on top of postgres so okay. we have a couple of extensions there we've got a snowflake extension we've got a spock extension 
we have different ways in which we're extending the capabilities of Postgres, um, but we're sitting right on top of Postgres. That's what, what I mean when I'm saying like Postgres native, um, that, that means you're able to leverage the, you know, full capabilities of Postgres, whether that's, you know, triggers or, uh, you know, the latest and greatest that's available. There's soon to be, you know, 17 when that's released, we do support that. And then we're just kind of additional layers on top of it. It's like in your, in, in Postgres, you can be like great extension Snowflake, and it's able to do that. Um, when you have the, the Snowflake, um, extension, uh, ready to go. So ultimately you have a lot of flexibility in, in terms of, of how you're able to extend your Postgres with, with PG edge. Okay, uh, and I, I'm also getting a comment here. I'll just I'll just post it in the chat here, uh, and then I'll throw it up on the screen. It might block our block our faces, but we're getting a comment here. Um, if looking at PostgreSQL database options, they aren't all created equal, and so when evaluating PostgreSQL database, oh, when you're when you're evaluating database solutions, so check out the buyer's guide on how to evaluate distributed PostgreSQL vendors, and then there's another QR code here. So um, yeah, what so what I, I can do is, so there are three, uh, I guess maybe like links to check out. One was the account creation, one was um, for uh, the, was for the multi-master, and then I'll add this one too for that white paper, and then I'll add this one too for the Postgres buyers guide so everyone can be informed. So I'll add those in the video descriptions and then uh, let's see if I can add it into a QR code uh, while I guess like that, like and while while M, while M, uh, MJ is talking. What I what I do think is cool is that you have a slide for everything, uh, you know, whether it's <laughs> for a location or for a white paper or for, you know, like 16 or 17. And so, you know, you're very prepared. This is, this is, is awesome. So yeah. Yeah, just just to add a little bit on on the buyer's guide and and it, it's such a, a fair point is that not all databases are created equal. It's like if you look at some databases, they're going to say, hey, you know, we're compatible with Postgres, but they were actually compatible with Postgres in version 12. And there's a lot of changes that have happened through six since six uh, since we're now in 16. Right. So like mm. you can once you start digging into the nuances of that, you're actually able to see that they're just there can be a strong differentiation between the way in which say PG edge appro approaches things as well as some of the other databases out there. So kind of understanding that nuance is really important. And I think that buyer's guide specifically tries to demystify it in, in kind of like a simple enough manner that you can kind of get the, the general gist of it. And then you can dig that layer deeper now that you're kind of um, uh, aware of some of the core considerations around differentiation between the different vendors in the space. Okay, so let me just see if I can just add this really quick. So uh, it's saying that, uh, let me see, uh, is this, I'll just do eval. Um, so I had a character count. So now I have not maximized my character count. So I'm, I'm able to add it. I had to change the word evaluate to eval. Uh, so there it is in the corner there. Uh, you can find out more about this white paper here about, uh, oh, well, let, let, me, let, me, let me just double check. Yeah, so uh, you can find out more about here about how to evaluate vendor claims of PostgreSQL compatibility. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, I, I think like, the, the one thing that, that I've noticed is like that you guys have very good documentation. So whether you have a question or whether there's a, you know, uh, you know some, some sort of like support group or something, then there's definitely an answer for it somewhere on, uh, on your website or there's a white paper that kind of, uh, you know, tackles that specific uh, circumstance. So it's, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. We have a, we have a really great team that like, uh, specializes in putting together the documentation. It's really responsive to you. You're going to see, like, as we hear common questions come in, we're, we're kind of constantly updating things to like, make sure that, um, our customers and prospects have the information that, that they need. Uh, there's a really good, uh, uh website docs pgedge.com that we're, we're constantly updating there. Um, and then speaking of documentation, let me just share that up here so you can, you can see that, um, when it comes to how to get, uh, PG edge working with, um, uh, Equinix, I am currently putting together a blog on that specific topic as well as a YouTube video. So that is something that we are, the blog should be out by the end of this week and then YouTube video, uh, next week. So that'll be, uh, a fun 
uh, fun way to also understand the best way to to get get up to speed really quickly with with PG Edge and and harness the capabilities of of Metal and the the great networking um, that's available with. I just want to say to show how fast and how good you guys are getting, uh, how um, how good you are about getting up to speed. Your background is nicer than my background. You got and you got up to speed within <laughs> a week or two. So I am blown away by the speed of PG Edge. And so if I'm impressed by that, uh, I'm <laughs> sure that that your YouTube video is going to be is going to be awesome. Um, you know, like the camera, the lighting, the microphone, the background, everything looks awesome. So your demo and all here is great too. And the slides were very well presented. So this is so, just so helpful for people to kind of like understand what your product is and how it's, you know, sitting on top of like PostgreSQL uh, and, you know, how it just solves a lot of, uh, I think maybe problems for our customers than yours. So, uh, you know, this is, um, this is cool. So um, right here on this deployment on this deployment options, can you talk to me about that? About what that graph is there? Oh yeah, uh, this is the intro page to the docs.pgedge.com. But oh, okay. um, it okay. does it does speak to. It, I'll just touch on that real real quickly because we we do have a couple of flavors. We we have a PG Edge Cloud, um, which uh, connects it. We our approach to the cloud is basically um, we bring your own cloud type approach. So effectively, if you go to like the, uh, yeah, exactly right there, um, it'll deploy into uh, key um, cloud providers like uh, GCP, Azure, AWS. Uh, we do actually have on the roadmap uh, Equinix as well. Uh, I, I believe that's uh, tentatively for, for later this quarter. Um, but again, um, I, I mentioned that because uh, it's mentioned here specifically. We also have a developer edition, which is basically, hey, you want to understand what the capabilities of multi-master are, but not want to worry about it, any of the infrastructure at all. We'll set it all up for you so you can play around with it. Um, and then uh, additionally, beyond that, we also have our platform, uh, which you can deploy anywhere. So that's where you have a lot of flexibility. Again, another key area of differentiation is like, can you deploy in an offline manner? Can you deploy you know, where you specifically want to be deployed? Um, that's that's where you have a lot of flexibility as well with with PG Edge, and you can de deploy in metal, or you can deploy on your own on prem, and you can uh, network all those together. And so those are kind of a couple of different flavors of of PG Edge, just to give you that that kind of rough background um, to Perfect. that question. All right, cool. Um, so I guess that that just about wraps it up. I mean, it, uh, if there's anything else that you wanted to let people know, um, that was that was a lot of it, of info for people to take in within. You know, 20, 20, like 25 minutes. This is, this is awesome. Yeah, no, um, I think that that was kind of the core things that wanted to, to, to touch on there. Um, you know, and if you have any questions, uh, you know, definitely feel free to, to reach out to, to, to me, MJ at pgedge.com. I'm, I'm here to, to help and support uh, those that are evaluating the technology, but also we have a, 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 on the website, you can either request to speak to us or, you know, sign up for the, the developer edition too. So here to, to help you all uh, kind of take a look at, at PG Edge if you want. And I appreciate the time uh, for everybody today as well as your time, Walt. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity. It was really an awesome experience and glad I was able to be here with, with you and everybody on the channel. Yeah, same. You know, I think that this is just really cool. I, I was so excited just to like show it off. So I'm the one that reached out to you guys. Then I was just like, hey, you know, like that your product's really cool. Come on, there's a cool partnership between us together. Uh, so I think that it just benefits the whole like developer community uh, at large. So this is awesome. So for those who are, who are watching, I'll put links in the video description below. Uh, you can find out more about their product. And, and of course, there's this QR code uh, um, on the screen. And uh, yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. And my thanks to MJ and to the whole PG Edge uh, team and uh, for putting this together. And uh, that's it. I guess that we'll decide. We'll just sign, we'll, yeah, we will sign it out from there. And if you if you have any questions, we'll uh, you know we'll keep adding stuff to the video description below for those who are watching. All right. Awesome. Cool. All right. Great. Thanks, Thanks so much, all. everyone.